Then the following Monday is the, is the due date for the data collection report. Um, so um, I'll probably talk about that a bit more in detail next week on, on Wednesday. I'll kind of go through um, what's, um, what's expected of you from that. Um, so, uh, but it, basically if you haven't looked at it, the, the main thing is you should be starting to make sure you have, have your data for um, the um, that you're going to try and use on the project. And it's not just to, to have your data. You can't just say, oh, I found all this data. I downloaded it. It's on my server. I also want you to start worrying about and thinking about um, you know, what format you need to get it into. Right? A lot of times your data is going to be messy. You get it. And some of you are going to have to spend more time than others. And a larger part of, part of your project is actually gathering the data and scraping it from the web and getting it into a, into a workable format. For some other people, the, you found, you'll probably find a data set that you can, is already in a good format. But, um, so I, so I, I, I'm hoping you have a good understanding of what your data is and you have a good format for it or at least have experimented with this. Um, and just then the report itself should be pretty short itself. But you should kind of have a good sense of your data by that, um, that point, which is do I guess a week from next Monday, which is present present day. Okay. Um, so then um, today we're gonna we're still talking about clustering, and uh, so we're gonna be talking about more about um, um, us. Um, assignment. Um, the assignment um, based uh, um, um, assignment-based clustering. And so the idea is you have this set of data and you've got some um, some sort of distance function which is Defined on the data, um, and so so typically we're going to think that the data lies in something like like R D D dimensional space. If I draw on the board, it's in a two dimensional space, and so the the distance function is defined on R D cross R D, and it's um, so typically this is going to be like the Euclidean distance. Um, and so the, the, the key means uh, property, which we'll talk about, is going to be is going to work well f um, for the Euclidean distance. It can be made to work for other distances as well um, in other settings. Like there's some some research by um, um, by Tom Fletcher, which uh, who's, who's in the department, who shows how to do these sorts of things on like a manifold, which is not you know. RD is one type of manifold, but there are more general types of manifolds. So you can extend those, but it's more tricky. But we'll talk about you know just the regular Euclidean distance and think of points being being in the in the plane um, in general. And so then the what you want to do is to find a set. Um, so this so R is going to be a set of these cluster centers, um, and we're going to have K of these. And so then we have this function phi, phi of r, which maps um, from some point x. x it, it, this is um, the so what this function does is it's going to return the center, which is in the set r, which is closest to this point x. Okay, so we're going to have a bunch of these points x in the set, and, and given a query in this function, it's going to return the closest one. And so we talked about these nearest neighbor structures. You can maybe use one of these, or you can just check all the distances. Um, so we'll, we'll have this function. And so then there are kind of three, um, there are the three most standard types of, of assignment based clustering there is the k uh, um, <coughs> center which was to minimize um, the, the max x in the set 
context of, um, of d from x to the closest um, center. So it looks at the assignment of every point to the closest center and finds minimize the maximum distance. So every no point is too far from the center. There's these the most famous one is the k means, um, which minimizes um, the sum over x in the set of the distance from x dr over x and this distance squared. So it's the sum of the square distances and then um, the k medians. Um, which minimizes which is just minimizing the sum of the distances. Um, so this, you know, if, if you're to write them out this way, this one would probably seem, seem the most standard, um, but this is typically what most people do minimize the sum of the square distances. There's, there have been places in, in history where people are writing something something like a k-mean, um, like uh, some algorithm for k-means where they're estimating the centroid of a data set. I think this happened with the, with the US Census in like the early 1900s, like up until 1940s. They were, they were computing the centroid of a data set, which is minimizing the sum of the square distances of all the population to try and create estimate the center of the US population. And they, they estimated something for just a, just the one center of uh, the estimate this. And they said, and they, they did it based on what we'll do for like the k-means, and they said it was minimizing the sum of the distances. For, for many years, people confused and didn't realize that, you know, the algorithm people usually use for k-means and the like is actually minimizing the sum of the squared distances, not the sum of the distances. Um, so this is, a, this is a very common mistake. Um, I think most people get it right now, but I'm sure people confuse these, you know, many times every day in, in the world and stuff. So um, hopefully after this class you don't confuse these. So that if you do, I would be very disappointed. I guess. But I'm I'm sure it'll probably happen. You know, whatever. Uh, okay, so. At the end of yesterday, I quickly went through an algorithm for the k-center problem. Um, this was um, the Gonzales algorithm. Um, and so you, you thought of building up this, um, the set of these centers um, um, by just one center at a time. This was c1, c2, up to ci. And then you had an algorithm where you chose C1 arbitrarily. And then you did um, for i equals 2, 2k, um, um, then you set um, Ci equal to the, uh, the R max of um, of x in the set x uh, of um, the distance from x to phi of r i minus 1 x. So what this was doing is it, so, so again, this is, this is the whole algorithm here. And this was doing something where it's always, is picking centers one at a time and always picking the one that's furthest from your input data. Right, so let's, you know, I, I run through an example of this again. Um, so if, if this is, is your data, um, what's going to happen is you're first going to pick some point arbitrarily as, as um, this point as C1. Right, and then so now for here you want to, and if we're going to go up to K equals up to k equals 3 in this case. So then what we're going to do is we're going to pick the furthest point from c1, and that's going to be c2 down here. Right? And, um, and so then after, after this step, you can think of your assigned, so when you just had c1, all points, the phi of, of r1 
assign all points to this center, right? Now that I have two centers here, I could think of drawing this, this line between them, this Voronoi line. Every point on this side is assigned to C2, every point on this side is to C1. And now I, I look at every point's distance from one of these two, and this point is now the furthest from any of them. And this one is assigned to C3. And then I stop. And that's it. That's the clustering algorithm. Now, all of these points, now I can draw this line again. Uh, there's another line here, another line here, and something kind of like So now, all points here are closer to C3, all here closer to C1, all here closer to C2. So the clusters are defined automatically by this assignment property given these three cluster centers. Um, so it's a very easy algorithm. You can get this to run in O of k n time. Um, and k is usually small, so it's basically in, in linear time. It's a very fast algorithm. And it's guaranteed, to, it's not the optimal solution to this, but it's guaranteed to give you a two approximation to this. Okay. Um, so, but it does have this property that it tends to bias the, the centers to the outside of the clusters. Um, so you notice how these are kind of on the, on the boundary here. You would rather have a center, if it's really called a center, it should be in the center, right? But this, these are kind of on the boundary. So you can post-optimize these. After you run these, you can maybe pick a, pick a point more towards the middle using some heuristic if you want to. But I found the right groupings of the points, right? So that's, that's what worked well. And typically, if you, if you have most clustering algorithms, if the data is these nice groups, it's going to work pretty well. So you usually don't need to optimize them to get the right actual clusters. Um, so this, in this case, it worked pretty well. Yeah? I, I missed what the, the R sub whatever it is in the algorithm. Yes. Yeah. What's the R sub? So, Subpar. so I've got a, a I set. I just can't read what the, Oh, oh what right it. here. This is I minus 1. I'll try to write this here. Thank you. Yeah. I minus one. So it's all of the centers I found so far. So to find the i center, I'm using all the ones I found before this. So and and then the problem with this also is that if I have you know some point which is an outlier here, I'm almost I'm definitely going to pick this uh, as one of the centers. This is far from everything. But this is not really capturing the data. So the case center formulation is very susceptible to outlier data points. Um, so in that sense, it's, it's not necessarily very good. Um, unless you want to capture these outliers. Maybe it's important to have everything close. So it depends on what, you, what you're interested in optimizing. OK, so this was what well, we covered this also last time. And we're going to come back to something that's going to look similar to this, but work for the k-means function instead. So that's partially why I, I do this quick review. Um, but okay, so but typically when you're talking about the k-means optimization, so so so, so I've done this before, but most people have heard of k-means clustering, right? And there's, there's a typically one algorithm you think of uh, when you think of k-means clustering. And this is called, um, actually, in the people who discuss this, this is called Lloyd's algorithm. Um, and so apparently Lloyd discovered this in um, 1957. Um, but he didn't publish it until 1982, for some reason. Um, so, so it's attributed to him, and, and I don't know why it took so long to actually publish the paper on it. I don't think it was just stuck in review for uh, 25 years. So hopefully no one has to deal with that. That'd be, that'd be a nightmare. Um, but I, I, I think he just never you know, uh, thought to formally put it in a journal somewhere until that point, but had written it down and people were reciting it. And so it, this is again going to very simple um, simple algorithm. So you um, so you start by you 
Um, um, choose um, k points R as a subset of x. Um, 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 you want to do this arbitrarily? Um, so actually, we'll we'll come back and discuss maybe how you actually want to choose these first points later. Um, and then you're going to um, repeat um, the following process um, for each x and x. Um, um, you're going to find um, phi of phi of r of x, which is which again is the closest is the closest center in the, in the set R, and um, so and if, what you're going to do is um, you're going to find a set. Um, let's say S i is going to be the x in the set x such that um, V of R of x equals um, C i, right? And then, um, so if you're just using this, thinking of this as a function, this set, this part really doesn't do anything. Um, but the, really what you're doing is you're building up the set. Um, and then for all SI, um, um, for all um, X in, um, let's see, you set ci equals to the um, the average of, of all the elements in the set. So, so really what this is, is ci is, is going to be um, the sum over x in si. Um, so uh, just you think of these as vectors, you sum up all the vectors, and then you take this and you divide this by the size of the sum. So this is what I mean by average. So the same way you can take an average in one dimensional with, with, with values, you can take it with vectors as well. Right? So that's what I mean. And so the, this is the new center. And you, uh, um, and you repeat this until, um, well, there's, there's, a, there's supposed to be some condition you're supposed to run this into, right? So, so how long do you run this? Well, um, one option is, oh, I'll have a list of these. Um, one possible thing is um, until um, the SIs are unchanged. So it's possible that given the centers, this you have it defines the same sets if, if that happens, right? Then then everything is, is unchanged and you can stop. Um, it, if you okay. you can also say until um, 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 for each of these i's that c i minus um, c i uh, old, so the old version of it is less than epsilon, right? So you, this, the movement in the centers changes by less than a small amount. Um, in, in this case, you can stop. And you can think of, um, you can, you can be, um, there's other conditions that you can think of as well. Um, so and people kind of make these up fairly arbitrarily. So something that looks like it's stable. So in, in many cases, you can just wait until it, it doesn't change, or you, you can say, um, until say ten, you know, rounds. Sometimes you you'll run this ten times. You go through this loop ten times, and you stop. You say that's probably good enough. And usually, for most data sets, ten is probably fine. Maybe it's you're even done after three steps. Um, if you chose your centers well, if you chose the centers here, 
then you're probably going to be done as uh, after after just one step, right? So if 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 I ran the example this Lloyd's algorithm on this data, where my input centers were C1, C2, and C3, then the first thing I do is I'm defining these sets, which is exactly what points are assigned to these CIs, right? So it's these points here. And then the second step here is I redefine these centers. So I take the average of all these points, maybe that's a point here. In this case, point here, there's some kind of outlier point maybe. And here, um, it's over here. Now once I've done this, I have to redraw these, these lines between um, the between the centers. Now I've got the new centers here. I'm redrawing these lines, and uh, and I haven't reclassified any of the points, so um, I can stop if I pick if I assign if I assign points to these centers again. It's the same set as before. So if I recalculate the centers, it's going to be the same centers, and I'm not going to change this. Right? But what can happen is that maybe there are some points which change which, which way they're classified by these lines. And then you keep repeating. Right? So, um, okay, so, so, is, so has anyone not seen this algorithm before? I have a question. Okay, yeah. Good. Um, is it possible that you just toss, you end up just oscillating around a, a couple points that jump back and forth between cluster? Um, that's a really good question. Um, so and the answer is, uh, um, um, you can't oscillate forever. Um, and in general, you don't oscillate very much. But about five years ago, there was this weird line of research where people constructed these really weird examples where you oscillated some huge number of times. Um, they, they very rarely occur in practice, but you can generate data sets where you have a lot of oscillations, but they're, but it's it's not going to be an infinite number of oscillations. And so here's here's the reason why. Um, so we want to look at this 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 cost function here, right? So we're going to say this is the cost of the cluster. It's the sum of all the distances to the centers. Okay. Now, there are two steps that we're doing here. And so the, the key is that both of these steps are going to be decreasing this cost. Now, it's pretty easy to see that this step is doing that. Because you're assigning to every um, center points points which are closer, right? So, so each point, if you look at the cost of each point, you're just adding up these costs, right? So each point, the cost it contributes is going to decrease in this step, given that you have the centers fixed. So, so you have the old centers and the new centers, and, and when you reassign them, you're assigned to something closer. So the distance and the square distance decreases, okay? So now this, there's this step which is, is the averaging. Now, the, the, the real reason why the Lloyd's algorithm is so powerful is that this averaging step also always decreases this cost. And in fact, there's this property that, um, um, so given a set um, S, um, um, then the point C, which is 1 over S times the average of X and S of X, is equal to, um, this point is equal to the R min of Y in, in, in RD of the distance from X to um, of the of the sum of x and s of the distance from x to y squared. So by by picking the center, this average like this, um, then 
it, this is the point in, in, uh, in RD which minimizes the sum of the square distances. So it, it, it has this property. Um, so, and this is the cost function of just the points in this one cluster, right? I did this for each cluster. I set the new center here. And this was the cost function of these points. And in this sum, I can break up the cost into, into parts, right? So the, the, there are two steps here. There's, there's, there's one and there's two. The, um, the first way of looking at it is the sum of x and x of, of d of, of x, d of r. Right, so I'm taking the sum over all these elements. Each element of the sum is, is decreasing or staying the same. In the second part, I can write this sum over um, i equals 1 to k of the sum over x in si. Si. So, um, and then write the d of x to ci squared. So these sums are the same thing here, right? This is just breaking the sum up into two parts. I'm still summing each point once in the sum here. Um, and so this is still the same. These are equivalent cost functions. And the ci was, was the phi of r in this case. But now I can pick the C of i to minimize each of these terms. And if each of these terms is decreasing, then this whole sum is decreasing. And so because this, this, uh, this, um, this average is what minimizes this, then this function must decrease. So then in every step of the algorithm, step one or step two, the cost is decreasing. That means that I can't pick so, so since um, since both steps uh, um, decrease the cost, this means that I I can't have um, so, so a set of of centers R, then go to R prime and then go back to R. Because the cost of this must, if I go to r prime, it must be less than the cost of r. And then if I go to r, it must be less than the cost of r prime. But I can't, um, but it, it can't be less than and also, uh, you know, on, on both sides because I've gone back to the same set of centers. So I can't go to the same centers twice, then I can't repeat this. And there are only so many centers I can choose. So, so this algorithm does does converge, um, and the cost always decreases. Um, so, um, so I didn't prove this, so let's see. Um, I don't have the proof in my notes. I wonder if I can do it. Or, do people want to see this proof? Or, OK, I'll, I'll try and do this proof, so let's see. Um, well, maybe I'll leave it as a homework with the answer or something. <laughs> so you, you can, yeah, I'll, 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 I think I'll leave it as a homework with, with some hints and I'll make you show your work. But it's, it's not too hard to do. Um, so and it, it's, it's this property which makes Lloyd's algorithm you know, very powerful. Um, OK, um, so, th so then given the thing that it must decrease. You can't have some set of centers appear twice. <laughs> then, then how many steps do we need until this until this changes? So, what's what's a bound on how many steps we need? Uh, the number of points. So n. So. steps. N? So um, N? So if, if it was N, that would actually be, if you could show N, that would that, actually be good, but people can't show N, right? And in fact, uh, it, it can take much more than this. Yeah. N choose K. N choose K. Um, so N choose K. So 
what this is saying is I can choose k points to be the maybe k points to be the centers. But the thing is, the centers are not elements of the set. Um, so th even this would be something like about this is roughly n to the k. So this would still be polynomial at n, which would be not so bad. Um, but th 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 this this would be if you choose the the points as, as the as the centers, but the centers could be anywhere. It really depends on how many ways you can you can break up the sets. Now, if the sets have to be ordered, then then this is the right this is about the right number of things you can have. But you can have you can have um, have a lot of these different possible um, possible sets. Let's see. Um, so. Um, so actually, I have in the notes which is wrong. It says n choose k, but that's not quite right. You can, if you look at this, um, if you look at this geometrically in the plane, uh, this is called the Voronoi diagram, which is dividing this up by centers. And there are there are only um, um, roughly n times k to the d. Uh, um, Voronoi diagrams. Uh, so if you're in D dimensions, uh, there are only this many distinct uh, 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 Voronoi diagrams you can have. There's actually some folk here, you know what that means. Um, so there are only this many Voronoi diagrams that can divide up the sets in these different ways. Um, and so, um, so the, um, so if you look at this, this actually gives you a bound. Um, so what is, what is this? That's not, um, okay, so the, the reason for that is that each of these lines are combinatorially only, uh, they, they have to, okay, I'm not gonna, if you know anything about arrangements and duals and computational geometry, you can say that there are only, um, there are only n choose d different um, like lines you can draw, which are dividing this, the points into two sets, and then you have to choose k of these lines essentially, or k squared of these lines. Um, so, th so that limits the number of lines of the Voronoi diagram you can do, and that limits the number of Voronoi diagrams, and then the number of possible clusters you can. Um, so it's it's roughly this. It's it's probably an actually n to O of k d. But so it's it's a the point is this is really a large number. Um, it's it's hard to it's it's hard to bound it's hard to bound this. So um, so, this, so there's something called um, smooth analysis which is some like way of analyzing algorithms where you took all your data, and you said, I'm allowed to, to perturb the data a little bit, move it around. And, and it eliminates a lot of weird cases that can happen, where you can get these exponential number of steps. And if you do this, then I think the best bound is something like O of n to the 35, k to the 34, and d e to the 8, which is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> So it, it, it doesn't really take this long. Although there are examples, people have created these examples where it takes something like, um, I, I think it's a large polynomial of n and d, and n and k. So you can't create weird examples where this happens. Um, there, like, but if you put points, if the points need to lie in a grid, meaning they've rounded to so much precision, then you know if if it's if, if, if it's on a grid. Um, then you, you can get to something like O of uh, D n to the fourth. If, if they lie in a grid that's that's not too not too small. So then you can get some analysis that looks like this. But still n to the fourth is still this huge number you don't want. I mean even when you just said n steps, that seemed like a lot, and it is. 
usually, usually 10 is, is right. Okay. Um, so, so um, why is it the case that all of this analysis says I might need this ridiculous many of steps, um, but in practice, running for 10 rounds is good? So the, the reason basically comes back to something I, I said last lecture that um, uh, it's, a, it's a little, I'm not going to write it back up the board, but if, if data is easily clusterable, if it looks like this, then clustering algorithms generally work well. Lloyd's algorithm is going to finish in a small number of rounds. If, if the data does not look, it's not very clusterable, it's, if, if the whole data set looks like, you know, like this, they're all uniform here, and you're trying to find the three best clusters, it might end up taking a long time, and the clusters may not be very, uh, might, might not be very neat. Um, so if the data is not well clusterable, or there's some weird configuration, it might take a long time to run. But then you should really be trying to find clusters in the first place. So if you run for 10 rounds, and it's moving, and it's still doing weird stuff, you probably don't want to find that many clusters. Um, or you probably don't want to do that. Probably there's some not a lot of structure in your data in the first place. And if it runs after 10 rounds and it works, then you probably found good structure. Or if there was good structure, you probably found it. Um, so, so although there's, there's, there's all this analysis, it generally um, that doesn't make a big difference. Um, there are some cases where it does kind of oscillate, um, os it does sort of oscillate a little bit more, and you can speed this up using some tricks. Um, so you, you can do something where, let me use a different color here, where it could be that the first three clusters look something like this, right? Or maybe even, yeah, so if I do this, then the Warner diagram might look like um, like this. So then all of these points are assigned to this cluster. This one moves here. Right? And, and these points maybe don't move that much. The new Voronin diagram looks like um, like this. And now I got stuck in the wrong spot. These clusters are all stable, maybe. This point is in the center between these two clusters. 